the River Congo, in the heart of the equatorial forest. It takes hours by canoe to reach these forgotten villages. The region is home to the tsetse fly. This fly transmits trypanosomiasis, more commonly known as sleeping sickness, which decimates entire populations. At Isangi Hospital, in the sleeping sickness ward, no bed is ever empty. The patients come here either by canoe or on foot after a journey lasting hours, like this mother with her little girl who's in a critical condition. You need hospitalization for uh, a flornitin for 14 days in monotherapy. If you have to send all of these uh, set and uh, drag in the countryside by aeroplane, it, it is costly. Changing the situation for the sick of Isangi would mean replacing the old arsenic-based drug. Melarsoprol, which is very, very toxic for the patient with encephalopathy and uh, more than 5% uh, of death from that drug. That's something we, which is worrying the national program. We have resistance more than 50% in the field. That's something other. But uh, eflornitin is good. In monotherapy, we have seen that in Sudan and in Uganda, there is also uh, raising uh, resistance. But it's extremely complicated to use. Four infusions per day for 15 days. So this project is actually uh, developing a new candidate drug that would, if it works, uh, become the first oral drug that we have for the second stage of sleeping sickness. Well, what we actually started is to do a literature search uh, in this family of uh, compounds that we knew had some interesting activity. And so we, we screened on all the existing knowledge that was already out there, done by pharmaceutical companies, academic institutions all over the world, and systematically checked whether this could be a new or a rediscovered drug candidate for sleeping sickness. And ultimately, that is what we, what we then found, uh, fexinidazole that was in development in the 70s, late 70s, early 80s. So we work with uh, companies that are specialized, for instance, in toxicological uh, studies, uh, genetic toxicology, pharmacokinetics, the uh, manufacturing of the drug, the process chemistry. So we have outsourced the different packages of work. Well, the biggest challenge, I think, relates to the fact that this will be the first time that a new drug will be, have been developed from scratch for a disease that is only uh, endemic in sub-Saharan Africa. And so I think that uh, we will face quite a lot of regulatory challenges uh, in, in doing so. And also in terms of the methodology, we will have to do clinical trials in, in where the patients are, which is in remote areas, in, in, in countries where the health infrastructure and, and the research infrastructure is very limited. So we will have to put a lot of effort in strengthening this clinical trial capacity to be able to implement uh, quality clinical trials in these conditions. Now we are looking for a drug which could help for the first and the second state at the same time. And a normal one, because it will be easy for the patient to take it everywhere. 